Okay, so the next speaker for today will be Christine Tasson, and she will talk about the linear, nonlinear substitution model. Okay, thank you for the introduction, Christina, and thank you. Thank you for all the organizers of uh, ACT, which is a very nice conference. So today I will present a joint work with uh, Martin Island that you can find on the archive. And it's, um, they, uh, uh, I will be talking about substitution on it. So our goal was to describe what is a model of linear and nonlinear substitution using generalized uh, multi-categories. Multi and we had to introduce a tool which is the, a co-limit construction applied to, to combine two monads on cats. And the result that we, we, we get is that uh, the co-limit is actually a two monad. And we, we've got a characterization of, uh, of the algebra of the co-limit. But I, I will first present what is why we what kind of uh, sequence calculus or uh, type system we wanted to, uh, to study, to model. And uh, uh, it's a uh, linear and nonlinear calculus inspired from the works in linear logic in the, the 90s. So we have a, a type judgment with a program T, which will output some data of type C using some variables or parameters with uh, two sorts. Either they are linear, that means that these variables can be used only once uh, when computing a, a result of t, or the parameters or variables can be nonlinear, meaning that you can use as many times as you want or you cannot use them. So here are the rules. And uh, we have um, um, our map, with, which is this uh, lollipop map, which means that S is a program that will take its input of type A and use it only once to produce a B. And when you apply uh, S linearly to T, then what is interesting is what happens with the context. So on the linear, for the linear context, you will just gather them. And for the nonlinear ones, you will contract the context. So that means that there is a sharing there. There is also a usual, um, um, usual map which is the, the type of, uh, the functional type of lambda calculus. And, you went, and for the application there, you have to be careful about the linear uh, context of T, because if you apply uh, S, which is using its uh, input value uh, as many times as you want to T, then you may have to d duplicate T. So you don't want T to have linear variables that have to be used only once. So that's what you, are, you have to be careful there. And then the nonlinear context is just contracted. From this rule, you can deduce one rule which says that if some program T is using its input only once, then you can fill it with a variable which can be used as many times as you want. It's fine. And it will be inter, um, important for the, our model. Okay, Christine. so what is... Yes. I'm sorry, there is a quick clarification question. Yes. Uh, can, you, can you only contract during linear lambda application? Uh, say it again. Um, can you only contract during linear lambda application? Uh, uh, no, you can contract for linear lambda application or usual application. You contract, the, the, the thing is you contract just the nonlinear uh, parameters. Great, thanks. You're welcome. Okay, so what is interesting for us is the linear substitution and the nonlinear one. So here I have a term S and I want to substitute X, which is a linear variable with a term T. So what's happening is that I just put together the linear variables here. And here is the contraction of the linear, nonlinear parameters. Now for the nonlinear substitution, if I have a nonlinear variable U, and I want to substitute it by T, I have to be careful that these linear parameters do not exist so that I, don't, I won't duplicate them. Okay, so we are interested in uh, knowing, understanding what is the model of a, a substitution which is combining linearity and nonlinearity. The usual approach is using categorical axiomatization where types are interpreted as objects, context, 
are interpreted as objects uh, that are made of types that are put together using either a tensor or Cartesian products. And terms, programs are interpreted as morphisms and the substitution is interpreted by the composition. So for instance, in multiplicative linear logic, a proof or a term T with linear parameters will be interpreted as a morphism from the tensor product of the types to C. So uh, graphically, you can think of it like you have your linear types, you gather them using the tensor product, and then you apply, to mor you apply a morphism. For the lambda calculus, you will use the Cartesian product. And, the, the, and graphically, it's just uh, like this, where you have the duplication. Okay, so the question is, how can we model uh, linear and nonlinear lambda calculus? And in the categorical approach, what we use is the framework of linear logic, where we add a shriek, which is um, a commonad uh, of a number functor, which allows to mark the nonlinear parameters, saying that, well, B1, Bn are nonlinear, and you should use them like that. And it's related to the fact that when you, um, you look at the Cochlear uh, category of uh, this um, commonad, then you recover the usual interpretation of lambda calculus. You get a Cartesian plus category. Okay, so now you have this shriek and you have the tensor product to gather all the context, but because the shriek is a common ad, it is an under factor, you could apply it everywhere. So you could, could apply it on C or on AL tensor shriek B1, and you uh, lose a little bit the meaning that it is only marking, therefore marking nonlinear parameters. So that is why we, we move to a multi-categorical approach where types are interpreted as objects and terms are interpreted as multimorphisms. So you don't have to use the tensor or the Cartesian product to gather the types into a context. It's, uh, it's done uh, internally in the multi-category and substitution is interpreted as multi-composition. So graphically a multi-category is just a set of, of operations with a sequence of input type and one output type. And the multi-composition is if you have one operation and several, a sequence of operations, then you can just pluck it to have one operation. In multiplicative linear logic, a term will be interpreted as a multi, multimorphism in a symmetric multi-category. And in lambda calculus, a um, uh, term will be interpreted as a multimorphism in a Cartesian generalized multi-category. And our question was, uh, well, what is the right setting? What is the right generalized multi-category for linear and nonlinear uh, setting? And for this, we need to uh, look at a multi-category as um, a distributor combined with a monad for the context. Okay, just a quick uh, look at what is a, a distributor. So the back category distributor can be seen as a generalization of REL um, and a distributor is just a functor from Y up cross X to set and the composition is just a generalization of the composition in REL. What we are interested in is uh, looking at uh, the, the uh, by category of distributors as the classical by category of um, cats uh, over the pre-shift uh, pseudomonad. As we can look at the relation category as the uh, classic category over the, uh, of set over the power set monad. Why we want to do that is because then we can use a distributive law or um, more a uh, pseudo distributive law between a uh, two monad, which will represent the context, and the uh, uh, pre shift pseudo monad. Uh, it's, if you want, it's like uh, in, uh, 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 in REL, you can consider the commutative mon monoid com uh, monad uh, of finite multisets, which extends from set to REL. Uh, because there is a uh, distributive law between the paraset monad and uh, the commutative monoid monad. Okay, so now what we are, want to, to do is to look at multi category as the uh, uh, classic category of, uh, of uh, uh, context monad. And the context monads that we want to consider are um, 
uh, we, we, have, we are interested in two uh, context monads. The first one is L, which stands for the free strict symmetric monoidal categories. And the second one is M, which stands for the uh, um, two monads for free categories of products. Both monads can extend uh, from cat uh, to dist. And that is why we can consider the class CP category over the, uh, this, uh, this monad. So, a multi-category can be seen as a distributor in the classic cate B category of D. Uh, so this means that uh, we will have, uh, uh, it, we can look at it as a uh, functor from Tx up cross x to set. Graphically, we will just have these operations which, which are in M and Tx is representing the sequence of uh, uh, types of inputs and X stands for the, uh, the output. But we also have to speak of the, um, uh, the identity and the multi-composition. And for that, we use a um, um, monoid uh, over M. This monoid corresponds to, uh, for instance, the multi-composition corresponds to the multiplication of, uh, of M. Okay, so now how can we use this multi-categorical stating? to uh, interpret our uh, type, uh, type system, type uh, sequence calculus. So uh, in this multi-category, we will interpret types as objects in X and terms as elements of, uh, of uh, M. And the substitution is interpreted by the, mono uh, uh, the monoid, the monadic structure of M. Okay, so now if I have a term T which is typed in this uh, judgment, then uh, its interpretation in, will be a, a multi-map in M over the, sequ the sequence of its linear type to C. And similarly for the lambda calculus. The only difference is the structure that we have on the context. So what are the operations that we can do on the sequence of the input types? Okay, so we know how to do for multi uh, multiplicative linear logic for lambda calculus, and the question was, what is the right setting? What is the right uh, context monad to monad for the mixed linear and nonlinear cal calculus? So here we have a sequence of linear types, here a sequence of nonlinear types. So of course, we will have a sequence of mixed linear and nonlinear types. Um, so we, we know how to describe it concretely. So we, uh, for, um, for the, uh, sorry, uh, uh, multiplicative linear logic, the corresponding co context monad is L. And we when we apply it to a category, you get uh, a category whose objects are sequences and morphisms are just bijections and sequence of morphisms. If you consider for lambda calculus, the uh, context monad will uh, correspond to the uh, free category of products. So when we, you apply M to a category, uh, you get a category whose objects are sequences and morphisms are functions and a sequence of morphisms. And for the mixed linear and nonlinear category, the, uh, when you apply it to a category, Q to a category, you will get as, uh, as objects mixed sequences with linear and nonlinear types and morphisms can also be described. But the problem is, first, we need to prove that Q is a monad on CAT, and second, we need to extend it to, uh, to distributors. So we tried to do that by hand, but uh, it was not working. And when we were describing all the structure that we have on QX, uh, we discovered that there is a, a structure on it which allows us to prove that Q is a, is a monad and, that, and we, uh, that allows us, us to describe its algebra. And this, uh, this structure can be understood through a collimate construction. So first I describe the collimate uh, construction in general and then I will apply it to our special city. So I consider uh, a B category K and um, a map in this uh, B category a map from A to B, and I consider the, the induced collax colimit on this map. That means that I have a cocon, alpha C, which comes with uni universal properties. With, there is a one cell aspect of this universality, which says that if I have another cocon, then I can factorize it, uh, sorry, through 
the, the colimit cocoon. And there is also a two-dimensional aspect, which says that if I have such equality between two uh, cocoons, then I can factorize them through a two cell between the factorization of the two cocoons, such that this map is corresponding to um, uh, the uh, K with these two cells, and the, uh, this uh, cell is corresponding to the composition of this uh, one cell with these two cells. Okay, and the unicity here of R and of these two cell two is really important for the following. Okay, so this is the general limit construction. So now I want to apply it to a map of two monads. So if, remember L stands for free strict symmetric modular category and M for free categories with product. You have um, a map of two monads between uh, L and M because every Cartesian category, every category of product can be seen as a strict monoidal category. Okay, and what we want to do is to apply our collax collimit construction on this map. Okay, uh, the two categories that we are considering is strict symmetric monoidal categories. Okay, so this uh, map of monad is also a, a map in Simon cat and if we apply our colimit construction we can describe what are concretely what are this uh, map so lambda will uh, associate to a sequence of linear types a sequence of non-linear types it will just transform them k it will uh, embed these linear types into a mixed uh, se uh, sequence of just linear types and no nonlinear types. L, it will take a sequence of nonlinear types and it will embed it in a mixed uh, sequence of no linear types and uh, the same nonlinear types. Okay, what is the meaning of alpha here? It is so the component of alpha are living in QX, and when I apply alpha to a, a mixed sequence with no linear types, it will just move the non-linear types into the linear ones. So this is corresponding to the fact that I can substitute a linear variable with a non-linear one, it won't hurt anything. Okay, so now uh, from the universal property of the, uh, at the one cell level and the two cell level, I can describe the property of QX. Uh, what I want to, to know is what is the action of Q over a category? So if uh, S, uh, X is a category, then uh, QX will be a symmetric monoidal category because it is the co-limit in the uh, world of symmetric monoidal categories. And uh, QX also splits through a, a category with product. That means that I have um, this uh, F from QX through uh, to QX through MX, which is just moving every linear types into the nonlinear words. And this is a, a strictly independent common end, which means that I have this two cell, which will allow me to uh, move the, the linear things to, into the nonlinear ones. Okay, so this is the three uh, properties that we have on QX. And actually it's, uh, these properties allow us to characterize the algebras of, uh, of Q. So now I can state my result. Using the uh, universality of the colimits, I can deduce that Q is a two monad on cut. And uh, I can also describe the Q algebras as the symmetric monoid categories that splits through a category with product together with some currencies. Okay. So, but the, what, what I have is that uh, I know how to describe the linear nonlinear context in my uh, generalized multi-category curl axiomatization, okay? But we still need to know how to extend Q from cat to this to be sure that this axiomatization is working. And to do that, uh, we, we in, instead of extending Q to uh, to dist, uh, we we can prove that uh, the 
precious pseudomonads lives to uh, pseudo uh, Q algebras. And for that, we need to describe pseudo Q algebras. So one idea is just to take the definition of the Q algebras and to uh, relax uh, the definition to make it pseudo. But then we have to prove something. And for proving that this, our distribution was really corresponding to uh, Q algebras, we were using the co-limits, the universality. And when we move from um, away to the pseudo words, we are working in pseudo L algebra and we have no more strict uh, symmetric monoelectric categories. And uh, we, we don't know. We, do, uh, we have no core limits, so we don't know how to do. So the, our idea now is to use a strictification and it's an on, ongoing work. So to sum up, we wanted to model linear and nonlinear simply type cal uh, calculus using multi categories. And uh, for doing that, we, 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 we have described a context monad, which is uh, uh, when we apply it to a category, it's an, it gives us mixed linear and nonlinear sequences, which is good. And we had to introduce a co-limit construction to combine two monads in a two-categorical two setting, and we gave a characterization of its algebra. And it's the end of the talk. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Christine. Let's thank the speaker. Very good. Um, so, uh, if there are any questions, I don't see any raised hands. And uh, in the discussion, there's just, yeah. Is there any, are there any questions? I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was just a clarification, maybe slide 14 or 15. Yes, this slide. So what is the difference between the lambda mapping and this L mapping um, between going to nonlinear only versus going not allowing linear and nonlinear, if I'm interpreting what you said correctly? Um, sorry, can you uh, ask again? I'm not sure. I guess the, I guess the, way, I'm, the way I'm understanding it, I'm yes. seeing lambda and L as the same thing. It's stated a different way, so maybe I've missed something. Lambda and L are the same thing you said? That's, that's yes. my understanding, which I'm, I'm okay. pretty wrong. So, <laughs> so uh, uh, okay, so I think it's why uh, I mix up the, the notations and I put some underlines on A1, AL in lambda. Actually, uh, LX, if you look at the objects, it's just a sequence of types, okay? And uh, MX, it's also a sequence of types. The difference between LX and MX are in the, in the morphisms, okay? So what Lambda is doing is just taking this sequence of types into, on the objects, it's just doing nothing, okay? But L, uh, the object of QX is are different because you have two sides of the sequences. You have the linear size and the nonlinear one. So the action of L is taking the types in uh, the sequence in MX into the se mixed sequence where you have put everything in the nonlinear size. When you compare it to K, uh, K is just taking the types, the sequence of types, and it puts everything in the uh, linear, uh, linear size. Okay, and that's why we have this alpha which is acting as taking these linear things into the nonlinear world. Did you get it? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Great. Uh, are there any more questions? Uh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, so in uh, some variants of linear nonlinear logic, you can have the linear linear types and the intuitionistic types are in two separate categories. Is that possible with your setup? Uh, okay, so, can, can you say it again? Um, so in, in something like uh, Nick Benton's linear nonlinear logic, yes, the linear and intuitionistic types are from two separate categories. Is that possible? With yes. Your setup? So um, uh, the, the the two settings are not uh, uh, the same but there is a relation uh, between them. So one thing what I th we can do is start with a, a linear and nonlinear uh, setting uh, category as Nick Benton, Benton's described it. 
and to uh, generate uh, the multi category, the linear, non linear multi categories that is associated to, to, to it. But then what we get is uh, we have to work to twist the things because the, uh, we get a commonality which is not uh, idempotent. So it, the relation is not direct. We, we thought at the beginning that when we were sta starting from the usual categorical axiomatization with these two categories, one which is linear and one which is for nonlinear world with the adjunction, we, were, uh, we will just take that and move to the multi-categorical world and get exactly what we were describing. But actually it's not working di directly. There is some skew skewing at, the, at some point. <coughs> okay, thank you. And okay. that, that was, uh, I think it's interesting because uh, uh, we, 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 what we get is some um, insights into uh, the linear and linear substitution that we were not able to see uh, when we were stuck with the, uh, the categorical axiomatization. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. Uh, let us thank the speaker again for the nice talk. And we now have a four minute break and we will begin then again. <laughs>